guys, welcome back to the MR2 build. We're back on track, so let's get back to working on the MR2. So, reverse lamp and rear fog lamp. These are in pretty bad condition and there is no connections for them. So, the idea with these is that at the rear of the car, where the mesh is at the bottom, on both corners, the fog light will go on the right, has to for UK law, and the reverse lamp will go on the bottom left. So hopefully these shouldn't look too out of place. Now, ideally I would like to put some LED lights across the back, something more modern, but that it's not as simple as just removing the rear tail lights because the rear tail lights are actually built into the body kit. So for the time being, we'll go with these. It needs an MOT and in this country, you need a reverse lamp and you need a fog lamp. One issue is that I don't have the plug. I'm pretty sure in the photograph when I purchased these it had the plug with the wires, but I can I can make that, it's not a problem, we'll get around that. The you need a good polish, they're pretty bad, the camera's not really picking up that well, but maybe that one is really badly scuffed. So I think I'll give them a good wash first because uh, the caked on mud, yeah, it's pretty dirty on the inside too. So I'll go and give them a clean, clean up the connections, and uh, oh god, yes, definitely need to clean up inside there so give them a good clean up come back put them together test them make sure they work and then go about polishing them and fitting some wires in the rear so that's a lot better nice and clean as you can see inside no more dirt and muck so they're ready to be reassembled so we've got them all cleaned up they're ready to be put back into the lenses however we need to connect some wires to these terminals now I've used these before in the past and they seem to work pretty well. They're a nice snug fit. That's up. So I think I'll use this red one. Basically just push some in one end, lift up the clip and pull it out. That one will work nicely. mess so i have checked these but uh, you're probably not going to pick it on the camera but the one here on the left has a kind of extra bit to it that is the positive the one on the right is uh, the negative and these should we can crimp them but these should fit on quite nicely all right so they're both in there now so now we need to test it right, so we've got our power source So if we put the ground on, positive, apply some power, make sure these aren't touching, it's fine. We have one bulb, so we make sure this other bulb works, so positive is that one. And your ground is that one. Okay, so what I've done basically is crimp them down. I've put some tape around the negative connection just in case he's wanting to connect and shot himself out. And I'm just gonna basically fill this full of silicone. Like so. silicone slide this over
is fine. So what I've done is this bit here is the top of the bulb. So it'll be sitting in like this. I've actually bent the wire down here because if any water does get in, you don't want to run up the wire. If you had it like this, water could potentially run up the wire into the actual fitting. The silicone here and here, heat shrink and electrical tape. So this thing is pretty secure, but just being safe side, I've pointed it down. So we have two bulbs, fully done, tested, working perfectly fine. So they are finished with. Let's clean these up. Probably maybe some sandpaper. Actually, I might try to use some polishing compound first, then polish. Because I don't think they're as bad as they look. So let's try it first. For just a bit of compound, a bit of polish, and uh, attachment to a drill, I'm pretty impressed. Not a single mark on that one. And this one was terrible. And it's pretty good. I mean, is it perfect? Probably not. There's a few very, very, very light scratches, which you'd have to use sandpaper to get rid of them. But let's face it, from this far away, it looks perfect. And remember, this is going on the bumper at the bottom. So, well, on the bottom right on the corner. So when you stand and look at the car, you're never going to notice some very, very tiny faint marks. In fact, I can't even see them now. They were, they were one or two. I think it was that corner. Just make it out. That's perfect. That'll, that'll do what I need. So this is the rear fog light. This has a longer cable because this needs to reach to the switch on the dash. So as you can see, that is the top. And the wire just naturally hangs down, so that's perfectly fine. So that's one. And this is the rear reverse lamp, and the text is at the top. I don't know if you can see the brand there, the manufacturer. Just at the top there. And this one is for here. This is a lot shorter because... The connection for this is literally about a foot above it, so that shouldn't be a problem. There's plenty of wire there, and that is it, really. That is basically it. So I've got power hooked up, so moment of truth. Let's see if these work. Look at that. The reverse lamp seems to be brighter. That could be because the red's diffused in the fog. I'll have to check the bulb, make sure it's a 21 muff bulb. Because that's what should be in it. But yeah, very happy. So the next step is to get these installed into the car. I will probably need to take the mesh off, bring it in here, cut a hole out, put these in place, then take the mesh back out and replace it at the back of the bumper. But that should be pretty much straightforward. The tricky part will be hooking up the rear fog lamp the rear reverse lamp is already fitting there i can actually tie this into so that should be fine this one could be the problem okay so i've measured the lights and they're uh, 79 to 80 centimeters wide so i've took the mesh off marked where i need to put them however i do have some spare metal laying around i've got quite a lot of this but i don't know i mean i'm, I'm going to paint both black regardless of getting painted black but I don't know if that would look better or this one. So I have the lights fitted into the mesh. As you can see, this is the right side. This is the left side. I've took them to the car. They fit perfectly. The gap at the top and bottom is perfect. So 
if I want to use this mesh, this is basically finished, just needs a paint. If I want to use this one, I'm going to have to redo it, but I'm still unsure. If I use this mesh, I'll have to change the ones on the side and the ones in the front. So I think I'll put this in the back burner. These are pretty much done by paint, so I'll have a think about this overnight. But the next step is the renumber plate. So I've had this out on the car. Obviously it does not fit because the one that was fitted before this was this guy here. As you can see, it's not even cut straight. Um, <laughs> yeah, this was cut to fit in the actual gap at the back of the car. This won't pass an MOT. You have to have, this is the minimum amount of clearance around the letters you can have in the UK. So that is no good. But obviously because that had to be cut to fit, this one will not fit in unless I cut it down. I don't want to do that. So what I've done is made some brackets. Now I used some wire to get a rough shape and then bent this into the shape I need. Quite simply, this will affix the short end there's a short end and long end. This side will affix to the bumper of the car, and then this number plate will affix to the back, like so. So, be kind of like this on both sides, and that will bolt to the car, and it'll come out kind of like this, and the exhaust will be directly below it. So, we need to put some holes in this, some holes in the shorter back side and some holes in the plate. So the plate is complete. That is basically how it look, kind of that angle as well. On the rear, we have the brackets. Now, what I may do is put a tack weld on the top and bottom of each, just to make it easy to remove the plate because once this plate is installed, you you have got a bit of room. So you, I guess you could put your fingers on the back and hold it while you screw it down, but it's probably gonna be easier if I just put a couple of tack welds on them bolts. And then it's just a case of removing these and it's just like a normal play fixture basically so that is basically complete it needs to sand down paint reassemble and we'll call that done regarding these let's cut out the other mesh and have a play about
Well, sometimes it doesn't quite work out. It looks okay, but I'll be honest, I prefer this. This is old school. This is when I first got into driving cars and modifying cars. I modified a Corsa about 15 years ago and I spent a fortune on it. And I use this all over it. So this is more peerage correct to the look of the car. And it's much stronger, it's more durable. This stuff's quite flimsy. If I use this, I'm gonna to have to put that behind it to give it some strength. If I decide to get the car painted at a later date, I'll change this out then, I think, because if I get the car painted, I'll probably change these lights out. I've got some LED indicators for the front and they look quite nice. So I think the logical step really going forward would be to change all the lights on the rear to LED, but that's that's a whole new project. For the time being, I'm gonna go with these. I'm gonna clean them up. Give them some black paint, put these back in, call them done. Same with this, take these off, clean them up, paint them, call that done. So it's a few days later and we have the rear reverse lamp and the rear fog lamp installed. I think the paintwork turned out really nice. It's got a nice shine to it. I think that should look quite nice up against the red. And the rear plate is also complete. I think this will look quite nice. The brackets came up really well. Pretty decent paint. It's hammerite, smooth black. So let's get these back onto the MR2.
fog light is installed what I've done is I've actually grounded the fog light to the rear of the car and I've run the positive wire from the fog light into the boot down to the bottom right hand corner of the boot through the firewall and then up along the sill of the car then up into the fuse box compartment to give the fog light power I use one of these guys basically what this does is you remove a fuse that you wish to kind of link into from the fuse box that fuse would then go here, and when you plug this back in, that becomes a working fuse again. This fuse at the top controls the power going out for this wire. And with this, I can piggyback off an existing fuse. So it's much safer, and it's a lot more simple to install. So this is plugged into your fuse box. It will come out the fuse box, down this wire. This is alive. This will go to the switch. Then out of the switch will be the wire I've run to the rear of the car, which the fog light is attached to. The ground the positive for the illumination which is connected and we have a live feed from the fuse and we have the out feed going back to the fog light. These are the old fittings which went to the relay which are no longer needed.
So everything seems to be okay. I've turned the car around, it's ready for the next part, which will be the front of the car. We're going to install some indicators, the horn, and a few other electrical issues that need to be sorted before the MRT. So I'm going to call this one here, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Like always, please like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one.